Welcome to the next round brought to you by Everlast Gable Montoya. This is Kim Ponting, Boxing, and folks, it's the card of the year. It is the rematch, December 3rd at the famed Madison Square Garden. They do it once again for the WBA Junior Middleweight title of the world. Miguel Cotto takes on Antonio Margarito. Looking at this undercard, Brandon Rios defends his WBA lightweight title against John Murray. Then in a junior middleweight slugfest, they do it once again. Powell Wolak takes on Delvin Rodriguez. Then an IBF welterweight eliminator, Mike Jones of Philadelphia, he faces Sebastian Lujan. Gabe, if there's a card in the United States that the true hardcore fan is looking forward to, top to bottom, I'm not saying it's the best main event or the most anticipated, but I would say one through four, this roster this might be the show. I thought you were going to say Chad Dawson's next fight. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it is to me, value for money. I mean, you look at HBO and they, they ran out of, uh, out of money for their budget, so there, there's a lot of more pay-per-views at the end of the year. Uh, but then you look at this card, and from top to bottom, uh, you're getting value for money. You're getting top guys. I know John Murray just lost, and now he's facing Brandon Rios. Uh, but the matchup is going to be a, a one that's going to uh, equal nothing but action. Uh, you got a revenge match, not a rematch, but a revenge match in the main event, and then a rematch of a fight of the year candidate and uh, Paul Wolak and, and Delvin Rodriguez. There's not much to, that you could ask for that they're not giving you. Uh, taking a look at the main event, this is retribution, this is revenge, and this could be redemption. And I, I think this fight is fascinating because this has now become a morality play, played out over a 20 by 20 piece of canvas. I think there are so many storylines that even the issue of the plaster, whatever it was in those hands, maybe that first fight, it's being overshadowed now by Antonio Margarito's eye. I found this fascinating by the New York State Athletic Commission. If you knew he had surgery, and Gabe, we all knew he had surgery. Yeah. We knew about it. They, they didn't do this in a clandestine fashion. Everyone knew that that was a career-threatening injury Margarito suffered at the hands of Manny Pacquiao last year. The question that I had from the very beginning, uh, before they started holding everyone hostage, especially the fans, who were paying good money to come in that weekend, why even allow this fight to have a press conference? Why was Malvina Lathan on the stage? I thought there were a lot of machinations here. I believe there was a game of chicken played by both sides. But when it was all said and done, Gabe, maybe I'm just being cynical. I think that there were political and financial forces that basically said, once you guys announce the fight, you're going through with it because there's too much invested in it. I think what the decision that was made by the NSAC was very simple. It was a business decision. Yeah, without question, it was, a, it was a business decision. But also, I mean, I don't think anybody should be surprised that a, a state-run agency, much less a boxing commission, uh, ran this poorly and ran this late, you know, close to the deadline. Uh, seems like business as usual. Most boxing commissions, you know, let guys through. And there was guys this weekend that, that had multiple fights fighting, a, you know, a pro debut or a guy with a, it was 1-0. and o. Uh, These things fall, always fall through the cracks. I mean, there's mismatches all over the country and, and, and egregious errors and, you know, guys breaking the Muhammad Ali Act and New York Commission, any commission, never really says anything. They always let it happen. So to me, I, I wasn't surprised that, that Margarito got his license, and I certainly wasn't surprised that the NSAC handled this so poorly. Uh, taking a look at the fight, Gabe, I think it's very simple. Just look at the way Cotto was working the mitts with his new trainer, Pedro Diaz, looking at what strategically he tried to do the first fight and what he should do coming into Saturday night. There's no doubt in my mind, you don't have to be Whitey Bimstein or Angelo Dundee to figure out. He's going to try to keep things in the center of the ring. And it looks like they're going to try to keep Margarito turning. In other words, don't let him set and plant his feet on the inside. Make sure that he's always moving because Margarito has never been a guy that could hit on the fly. The question is, though, the first fight he had success moving. But then that boxing became a full-blown retreat while one guy was going uphill. The other guy was coming downhill at a very rapid pace at the end of the night. My question is this. We know that neither guy is the vintage of 2008 when they first met. The question at this point is who has more? And the sneaking suspicion that I have is that it's Miguel Cotto, Gabe. Uh, I have to agree. You know, um, you know, Margarito's greatest strength was he was able to do two things at the same time in his prime. He could take a beating while giving a beating. You know, he could take a shot, give a shot right back. Uh, he was never, uh, you know, quick, but it was, it was volume. And so in the midst of you hitting him, he was probably hitting you two or three times. And over the long haul, he could take more damage than you could while doling out more damage. Uh, and that's how he usually, you know, won in the back end of fights, wearing you down, getting you out of there, or overwhelming you to a decision. Uh, the version we see now can do one thing, uh, which is take a beating. 
uh, he can't really quite get off with his punches. And maybe that was the speed of Manny Pacquiao that, that rendered him uh, would just, you know, uh, up into a punching bag that, that really couldn't get his shots off until later in the fight. Uh, the, I, I picked Cotto in the first fight because I thought he had more ways to win, that he could brawl and he could box. Uh, we found out that he can't brawl with Antonio Margarito, but he still has that ability to box, whereas Margarito is, is slowing down more and more each fight. Uh, that's why I'm going with with Cotto in this fight, just based on that. I think he's going to move, like he said. He's going to turn him. He's going to probably take the steam out of his punches and, and instead just use straight, fast shots to outbox him all night. I think Cotto, it's very clear. Even if he's boxing, the one thing he has to do is to draw that proverbial line in the sand and boxing cannot become a retreat. If he goes into a reverse gear, even older fighters who may be a little bit faded like Margarito, Gabe, if you allow them to come forward, they're still pretty effective. I don't know what Margarito has left in his legs. Here's an interesting stat about Margarito. Since he beat Cotto in July of 2008, Gabe, he's fought all of two times. Yeah. He's had two layoffs of more than a year. So, Russ don't sleep? Well, I'm not sure about that. There's a lot of WD-40 that needs to go into Margarito. If I'm Margarito, I don't know how long that eye is going to last. I think the warranty is up. This could be an Israel Vasquez situation going into his fourth fight with Rafael Marquez. If I'm the Tijuana Tornado, I say to myself, I have a four-round window. I have 12 minutes to set the pace and back this guy up. And I throw everything but the kitchen sink. I try to force the quickest pace possible, and I let my hands go. I thought the Pacquiao fight, I thought one of the problems he had was he thought too damn much or was made to hesitate before he let his shots go. Mm -hmm. He was consistently beat to the punch. Now, Gabe, I don't think he has that type of hand speed, but I do think Cotto is a much faster, quicker fighter for his style. And also, we have to be honest about this, we don't know what effect whatever those hand pads had in that first fight really affected him. One guy's out to prove that the first fight was not a fluke and it was clean. The other guy flat out believed that it was a criminal act created there that night. I think that is the intrigue of that fight. How well does Cotto take this version of Margarito's punches? Well, and what happens if he gets hit and it feels exactly the same way? Oh, now, now the fight turns. Yeah. Then the fight turns completely. Without question. I mean, I, I kind of tend to agree with you on, on Margarito's strategy. He's got to almost be like Giovanni Segura. Let it go. Just let it go. Yeah. Just, and, and go to the body. I think the first four rounds, he should just kill the body and then hope for the best after that. See where he's at in round five through, you know, five through eight and then kind of adjust from there. Uh, with Cotto, you know, he's also he's bringing in a new trainer. Uh, he's more of an amateur style coach. That's where uh, the base of his experience is. He's had some pros, uh, but that's really what he does. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if, if they're going to do kind of a similar version to their first fight, which is kind of hit and move style and backing up and and then landing combinations, but getting out of there. Uh, it, the the question of of who has more left is really big with Cotto to me. Uh, he's, I thought at times struggled with Ricardo Mayorga. He took a pretty bad beating against uh, Manny Pacquiao as well. Um, he hasn't quite looked like himself um, in any of these fights. And really, he, he beat Yuri Foreman because he had one leg. Uh, he was eating right hands all night. And that fight could have been much more interesting if, if uh, Yuri Foreman had two wheels. And Yuri Foreman doesn't punch really yeah. well. That's a very soft-handed fighter. Pure, classic, European-style boxer. One thing about Margarita that I want to see... And you mentioned this. His trademark was the ability to have an iron shin and a strong will. After the first three, four rounds, which I expect Cotto to sweep, if Margarito was there taking those shots and smiling back at Cotto, now psychologically we go back to the night of July 26, 2008. Because now the fight is on. Because say what you want. That was a lopsided fight against Manny Pacquiao. But Manny Pacquiao was banged around by Antonio Margarito. If you mm -hmm. talk to some of the people around that camp... That was a very, very physical fight. Margarito can still bang to the body. I still think he has very heavy hands. The question is, can he last? And then the politics of this decision. This is basically going to be mini Caguas. This is a home turf battle for him. You know, the public sentiment is for him. I think it's going to be very, very difficult, if not impossible, for Margarito to win a decision. My official prediction is I like Cotto to win a decision in a fight where I think he's going to box. I think he'll have some moments, Margarito, I don't think they'll be sustained enough to win this fight. Gabe, I got to give Top Rank a lot of credit. In the past, they have Butterbean and Mia St. John does to death on undercards. And just last month, they gave us Tim Bradley against Joel Castlemayor. I think this time, they did themselves and the fans a favor.